Hey, Renee, Chris, and Ryan going live. The best podcast, Beauty and the Beast. Sit back and catch a vibe. Please welcome Meg and Renee. Renee, Chris, and Ryan going live. Might as well. This is, uh, you know them as Luke and Yumiko from The Walking Dead. Please welcome Dan Fogler and Eleanor Matsuda. Classic rock, brother. There's nothing more classic than that. Welcome, welcome. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing, Dan? Pretty awesome. I like this whole uh, vibe here at the yeah. camp, man. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a question. Is this what it's like to be at camp in America? Because in England, we don't really have camps. It's summer camp, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is this what it's like? kind of camp. Yeah, you yeah. missed out. Yeah. This I'm like, a better than camp. Great. Yeah, you guys are here, so it makes camp even better. Plus, like, normal camps, you have, like, the bunk beds and all that. You have outdoor activities. Well, you have outdoor activities. Yeah, we don't have any camps. This is the family camp. Well, I dig it. I'm going to take this idea back to England. I think it's going to catch on. I think we can bring it to England. If you bring it, bring me. Okay, done. Deal done. We're all witnesses. Can you do a British accent? Back in Georgia, though. I bet. I feel like I'm about to be called to work. Yeah. Today. <laughs> I, mean, I like the memories are just flooding back right now. Yeah. And I did a tour of Alexandria this morning, and um, you know they're taking all the walls yeah. down yeah. and everything. Yeah. So I was like, I know this place. Wait, where? <laughs> where did it all go? It's funny you said that because I did the tour and I kind of walked through in November, and I thought the exact same thing. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I feel like I know this street, but I don't know the street. Yeah, it's and it's bittersweet, right? Like, it's so nice to be back, and then there's also a bit of sadness. I was like, oh, it's gone. It's just like normal houses now. I like that. Yeah, we spent a lot of time in this hotel. Uh, they basically put you up at this hotel when you start working on the show. And I only knew that other section. I've, I've seen more of this hotel today <laughs> than I have ever in my life. But it's lovely. Look at that. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. Um, yeah, I think that it's pretty smart. It's all contained. And then like everywhere you go, everyone's like hugging and hey. And it's a one-stop shop. I love it. I love it. I don't know. He's gonna go make an ad out of that. <laughs> Oscar should do Oscar, let's just put it that way. <laughs> Well, I, yeah, I guess, you know, we're just going to talk about whatever, and then we'll eventually field some questions for them out there, so get those ready, and we'll, yeah, so basically, um, I guess you can share, you know, something fun about The Walking Dead, we'll start there, but we do have some other questions about other projects, but I don't know, just share uh, maybe a fun story or something that, you know, that we wouldn't know that about your experience on The Walking Dead. Ah, oh, fun story. Well, you know, I was reminded about, like, when, because I did the tour in Alexandria this morning and it made me realize, like I shot some stuff in there, but actually I didn't shoot a lot of stuff in there because when we first joined as a group, um, I was actually stuck in the UK for a really boring reason. It's like a visa thing. I couldn't get my visa in time. So these guys started shooting before me and that was quite terrifying because, you know, I felt like I was missing out and I was like really eager to get there. So they made up, so in that first... Uh, episode where our group joined. You know, it's a pretty famous episode because obviously it's the one where Rick also leaves. And there's a time jump and then we come in. And um, they had to write into the episode that Yumiko falls and like hits her head. Um, and then I, because 
I wasn't there, right? So they, they had to write it in that like, oh, Yumiko falls and hits her head and then has to go off to the infirmary for a few days. So that's why they like explained my absence, which was a very clever way of getting around it, except I was stuck with that goddamn bandage for like two I hated that thing so much. It's funny you said that, because I was telling them, so we were talking about like, oh, what we're gonna talk to you about. And I was like, I remember when you took over the lot, uh, the Walking Dead lot, or the Instagram, and you had mentioned it, and I couldn't remember what the reason was. I was like, guys, there's a legitimate reason. I gotta talk to her about it, so I'm glad you said that. Yeah, me and that bandage, I was like, we have to part ways soon. <laughs> Did you like burn it afterwards? Give it a nice fair one. Yeah, I said, I said, someone take this away from me, I never wanna see it. <laughs> And Georgia Heat and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, no, no fun. fun. It was just <laughs> weird. It was weird. Yeah, but the, so it's funny. So I think you guys spent more time in Alexandria than me, actually. Because by the time Yumiko comes back in, I think we went off to Hilltop. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that was a little memory. Yeah. What about you? Yeah, they have. Yeah, Alexandria was cool. They had that pizza oven. It was nice. It was awesome. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I, something that people don't know, uh, I don't know, I, I really, I, I basically, they were like, can you ride horses? And I can't. <laughs> and I was just like, yes, I can. of course I can. So I was freaking terrified of like, the horses. And because the last time I was on a horse, I was, um, I was like five at this fair. And the horse just like basically just stood in one place. They put me on the horse, and then it's, I just immediately just started sneezing. <laughs> they were like, "Get him off!" And then uh, so that was my like trauma. <laughs> and then so I was like, "What's gonna happen? Am I just gonna be sneezing this whole thing?" And then and then I got the, I got to the horse. They're like, "This is Mojo. This is gonna be the, the horse you're riding." And the guy said to me, and I was like, just like starting to practice practice meditation, he's like, yeah man, just like, you know like an avatar where they do like the melding of the, you know, the, their, their spinal hair cord to the horse? And I was like, he's like, that's what you have to do, except, you know, emote it, man. Like, try to match the horse's energy. And I was like, you're a freaking genius, sir. And then it became like this calm, really meditate, so I, I went from like being so scared of the horses to like, when can I ride a horse again? And uh, so yeah, so the city boy like started loving doing that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was good. That's a quick question. So we kind of know a little bit about your character's backstories. We kind of yeah. like learned through, throughout the episodes. If you guys had to choose like anything from your character's past, what would, you, what would it be? Like if you got to choose any attributes or anything that also that happened in their lives? What, that we would like want to take with us, like as in like, like what do you mean? Yeah, let's go, let's go there. Yeah, like any attributes from your characters into like real lives. Oh, you know, with with, with you, maybe I'm not hearing the question right, but like the thing I always loved about her was she's so loyal, and uh, and I'm I'm pretty like that in my life too. I'm 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 incredibly loyal to my friends. I really liked that. I really like that that seemed to be the thing whenever I read scripts. I was like, oh, she's really, she really shows up for her team. And, um, you know, we had this phrase in our group, which was ride or die. And I always loved that. I always felt like that was a real more so that they lived by, even when later on in the seasons, when they all kind of split up and went their own ways. I felt like, um, you know, I always had this, like she'd just do anything for her friends, even for, like for Magna when they would split up and go their separate ways. She had this kind of built-in uh, dedication and devotion to her relationships, and I just love that about her. You kind of saw that actually on screen, because like anytime she would be like in like Commonwealth or something, you you can see like oh oh I'm kind of getting pulled this way, but yet I got to stay loyal to my to my people. Yeah, like it's not an obvious attribute, you know, like that's yeah. like something like oh he's. The, really strong or like she's amazing with this but it was like a much sort of subtler personal thing and I just but it was a real it became a real strength it became like one of her weapons you know like, because she was so devoted like when she went to the Commonwealth you know she was checking right. that out you know but when she realized things started that she was like no I'm, I'm gonna stick with my people you know? right like she <laughs> had these morals and and like she they, they became 
Exactly, you take, it, you take her out of the apocalypse and you put her in a more structured environment like the Commonwealth. And all of a sudden that becomes the strongest weapon she has, is her words and her loyalty and her, her passion, I suppose, for justice. So that, that I, really, I really loved about her. That's something I really connected with. Yeah. What was the question? <laughs> What was it that you, I'm gonna rephrase it based on her answer. What was it, something about your character that you kind of like linked with? We'll put it oh, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. Well, that's like kind of the best way I can put it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Don't say <speak. laughs> Do you need a moment? She just spit takes on everybody. Um, the, uh, wow. Yeah, I, I, Luke was like, um, the way he was with music and musical instruments and like, how he would risk his life to save a tuba. You know what I mean? I need it. Someday we'll be able to play tubas in peace again, you know? I just thought that's like, that's insane, but it's also really quite admirable, like the hope that he holds out that everything's gonna be okay again. He's gonna be able to teach music class again. That's like, I feel like I would have that kind of <laughs> like I would see like um, I'd be walking along and I'd be like oh my god is that a replica Batmobile right there? <laughs> Yoink! I know I almost got killed but it's a replica Batmobile and someday <laughs> someday we'll be able to enjoy these in peace again put them up on shelves Joy, you know, I'd be and like then you that. never touch it and just stare at it. <laughs> like, <laughs> guarding it. Um, yeah, I, I kind of linked with that. I was like, oh, it's really... I, I, I understood that about him. Yeah. I think that's a couple good ones lined up. <laughs> One thing I want to talk to you, I loved your movie, I Used to Be Famous. Uh, you guys see that movie? If you haven't, you need to see that movie. Wow, tell us about that because what a, what a heartwarming, the story was wonderful. <laughs> yeah, well it was this beautiful little movie that, um, that kind of came about out of the blue because we were shooting the final season of, of Walking Dead and um, so at first when they asked you know, if I, if I could do it, I was like, I don't know if I can. Like, I wasn't sure if we'd be able to fit it in. And it was COVID and, you know, we were still kind of in, like, the heights of restrictions and traveling. So it felt like it was going to be impossible. But then in that strange way that sometimes, I think, when things are meant to be, things kind of fall in the right way. And, um, and it was made possible. And so I, Walking Dead gave me this, like, six-week window um, right in the middle of the season to go off and shoot this. So I, we, I flew back to England with my family and we just shot the shit out of it, basically. <laughs> it was just, yeah, we just, um, and I could, because it was, there was so much riding on it as well, like, you know, going and shooting it, knowing I had to get back here to shoot dead. I couldn't get COVID. I remember just, like, just don't get COVID, don't get COVID. So I didn't go out, I didn't like, I just, I was like just living in the movie in England um, for that, that six weeks in this intense period of time. Um, but it's a beautiful story um, about a young boy uh, who I played this young boy's mother, um, and he's a very talented. Um, he has autism, but he has a, a very talented drummer, and um, he makes friends with this guy who used to be famous, who used to be in a boy band, and they kind of form this unlikely friendship and start this um, this band, kind of against my wishes. And it's just something I. I don't get to do a lot. I don't get to make a lot of stuff that like my kids can watch. Like with Walking Dead, I'm like, yeah, 20 years, yeah. kids. And like, and you can watch me like, killing things. But um, this is really like just heartwarming and feel good. And I just, I really loved doing something that was just so feel good. It felt great to, like, just felt nice to, to do that kind of thing. I, I really loved it and I'm very proud of it. So yeah, yeah it's absolutely. on Netflix. You can yeah, watch so it. check it out if you have it. what I'm doing tonight. <laughs> I yeah. dare you not to cry. Yeah, yeah. All right, you guys. I'm gonna, t I'm gonna text them if I cry, <laughs> and then I'm grooming with them, so they'll, they'll okay. be witnesses. Okay. So I have a question because I'm a huge gamer, and I heard you have a new video game coming out. Oh, uh, uh, uh. 
I don't know if you're, I heard, I, well, I saw it. I don't know if it's allowed to be spoken about. Me? I saw something on IMDb. <laughs> What'd you see? Because, okay, okay, can I, 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 if you can't speak about it, I'm not gonna get, I don't want to end with well, in trouble. Well, here's, okay. The, I'm not trying to be secretive. There, I, this is a genuine, genuine, genuine answer. There are, sometimes, I do a lot of voices for video games, and yes. I do a lot of voiceovers. And sometimes I do voiceovers for things that are so coded in, in names, and then like months later, uh, I only okay. find out what it is. That sometimes I genuinely don't know if I'm something. <laughs> That's how coded Okay, tell her what she's yeah. gonna be doing. I thought Squadron 42. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm a huge gamer. Okay. But I would love if you could tell us a little bit about it. Oh, I, see, you know, they, or so if you're allowed like, to. Yeah, no, like, I mean, I, um, it's a very, yeah, very, very cool game. Again, we, we recorded that a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have to say, I feel like it's been um, like maybe two or three years in the making. And I don't know if all games uh, are like that. Like, again, a lot of times, like I know like, like Grand Theft Auto, for example, that's yeah. been made for like probably like five, six years now, and it's still not done. Yeah, exactly. I, I think I, it's still a world that even though I'm kind of a part of, I still don't quite understand it in the way that I do television or film. I'm like, oh, I, can, I see how this is made and you know, it goes into the editing process and then you know, later when it comes out. And with gaming, I feel like, what? I, honestly, I'm like, I don't know. Like, I made something <laughs> five years ago and apparently it's not out yet. But like, yes, yeah, Squadron 42 I did do. It was very, very cool. Um, I think, if, if I'm thinking of the right one, the gra like, it's pretty mind-blowing, the, really? the, the graphics. And if it's, if it's still not out yet, they must have been working on it, so it better be mind-blowing. I, I don't know what they're working on. Because a lot of times, a lot of new games get introduced in the summertime. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping like maybe we'll kind of hear more about it this summer. Yeah. I hadn't heard about it until I was just like scrolling through online one day, and I was like, Maybe they keep them back and like wait for the good time to release. I, I, just, I honestly don't know. So I'm gonna find out. I'm gonna find out later. Yeah, I'll get back to you on that one. Yeah, I'll get back to you on that one. Yeah. Read my own IMDb page. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And Dan, I heard you also got to be in Lego Dimensions video game. You got to play. What? Yeah, it's Jacob. Yeah, so how that like what both of you like? How is it like doing like the voiceover process versus being like on set with you know like Walking Dead? Or oh, wait, like, it's Jacob's your character from Fantastic Beasts. Awesome. The same character as a Lego version? They yeah. kind of made it like a... I can't think of... Like, you get to go on like, all these different worlds as like a Lego character. Yeah, it's... it's uh, yeah, they tell you to like... I'm like, yeah, this is how he sounds. Like, he talks like this. And they're, they're like, well, can we amp it up a little? You know? <laughs> so it's like, oh, gee whiz! Oh, my gosh! You know, it's like, that's the... That's the that's the style that they that uh, they like, and uh, so it was fun. You know, I was just like, um, I mean, I love all that stuff. Like just to see myself as a as a Lego, I'd be like, oh, I'm a Lego, and then uh, <laughs> like to see him like running around and like you know animated is amazing. It's so just incredible. Man. Do you I have your Lego character? What's do you have your Lego character? I do. I got like okay. fifty of them. Like, okay. <laughs> people give them to me. Like, have you seen it? I'm like, no. No, not at all. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> My daughters just have like a whole shelf of them. Yeah. Um, it's like, oh, another toss in the door. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you open it, they're like, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, I, 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 I was hoping that they would make. Like, you know, I love those pop vinyl dolls. Yeah. I was hoping that they make it with our crew. I they, thought exactly yeah, the I, same thing. Yes, they all they yeah. like, thank you. They, yeah. like, need to make one like, of our crew. There were some fans that made mock-ups yeah. of them. I saw them. And I was like, wow, gorgeous. <laughs> I was like, so hey, cool. take a hint. Yeah, you're know? Yeah, like, don't worry. yeah, definitely. I think they're missing a trick there. Yeah. Even little Lego pieces. A little yeah. human Lego. Well, well the cool Lego. thing is, with Lego, you can actually build a custom minifigure. What? I know there's one in the a store in New York, in uh, I think it's like in Rockefeller Center. So I built one of myself. That's yeah. adorable. And it's a little thing. You can design the shirt. You can have like, a little custom weapon. Done. I'm going. <laughs> All right. I'm going. There you go. I, I think there's. There you go. Hollywood. There we go. Who knew? <laughs> All right. We're gonna do one giant road trip. Yeah. And then you have to bring the camp back to the UK. So you have one. Do now. I know, I know. I'm making Maybe a list in my head. head there you go. <laughs> Shopping list. Now I have a question. I loved you in the Goldbergs. Yes. Now I <laughs> right. Who's the Goldbergs fan here? All right. I, so I know that was basically based on Adam's like real life 
Yeah. Did you get to any input on Marvin? Oh, oh, oh did I? I mean, he basically, because I work, I work with Adam Goldberg on Fanboys, if you guys know that movie, Fanboys. Yeah. That's how I met Adam. And then, um, so that was like him putting, casting me again because he liked working with me. And so he's like, you're going to play my uncle Marvin. And he's like, just, you know, just be you. Just be a maniac. You know? Just be crazy, basically. And, uh, and I was like, I, I love it. I'm on board. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that was, that was awesome. The 80s, I had this weird thing with, I, I've done so many things, TV shows, movies, so many things with the 80s, and I, you know, it's like, awesome. Like, I, yeah. I love it. I grew up in, I was a kid during that time. So it's so cool to just pay homage to that time period. And uh, there's one, I got to, I got to drive the freaking, DeLorean. That was an awesome episode. <laughs> I drove the kit car. I drove the freaking. I drove all these amazing, like, iconic 80s cars. I was like, unbelievable. Um, there's one episode where you see Uncle Marvin. And really? it's a, yeah, it's a Thanksgiving episode. I think it was the first one that I was on. You know, they, at the end of every Goldberg's episode, they showed the real they life showed the re Yeah, because yeah. Adam was, when he was a kid, he was always just filming everything uh, on his video camera. So he's got all this home footage, and you see, it's this funny, it's his Uncle Marvin at the dinner table, and he's sitting at the dinner table, and everyone's eating, and he's just all pissed off. <laughs> and, and off camera, you hear his dad just being all, what? What are you angry at? And Marvin's just all, It's like I'm just a microcosm of every episode I've been in uh, at the Goldbergs. You know? I just love it because like anytime I saw you on screen, I was like, all right, this episode's going to go totally left field. <laughs> I don't know what to expect. And it was always so entertaining. It was yeah. fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, it's a fun <laughs> show. Question. Do we have any audience questions? Oh, a lot of hands, a lot of hands. Chris is going to go around with the mic. Before I answer my question, I must say, even though Lauren Angel and Nadia ain't here, oh. Luke's death scene. Oh Can we just get a moment for Luke's death scene? Because y'all get that. I'm always crying, but like, I will. <laughs> the harmonica. Okay. Girl, that was such a good scene. That's one of my all time favorite Walking Dead scenes. Like, it was. Wow. Y'all did that. Did they ever let Tommy go back and work night shifts at the bakery? Or is he just straight back in the thoracic surgery? Isn't that right? Because they didn't have to do him like that. He could have took some shifts at the bakery. So. <laughs> you know, here's the thing that Tommy wasn't a great baker. <laughs> he had like 12 years worth of breakfast. He wasn't that good. <laughs> and, then, and then it turns out he was kind of like an okay surgeon. Like we, we joke about it a lot like me and Ian, but he was always like, I don't know, I'm just like, I'm a kind of an okay surgeon. I'm not a good baker. What do I do? I was like, well, one of them is life risking, and one of them is just, you know, a bad cake. So, um, yeah, he, he, yeah. I, I, it's so funny. I, I really, Ian was so fun to work with, and I really loved when they introduced that whole character, the mm -hmm. brother. I wish we'd done more, though. You know what I mean? I feel like that was. Oh, we all would have liked a little more karma work, but. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it was one of the storylines that probably had lots of ideas maybe in the writer's room yeah. and then what happens is is that as we go on you know mm -hmm. things just have to get like take priority the show moves in different ways and there's so much stuff that just doesn't make it because in the, the comics it was a whole thing a like, whole was, thing yeah, so. and i was excited to explore that and i know it was too and it just sort of never really it never really had got like the momentum that i think we we hoped that it would yeah and i don't know it's so funny because even though it was an extended season for the final season in a way i felt like we were trying to cram so much in those final eight episodes suddenly felt like let's tie everything up and mm -hmm. um i don't think it got maybe the attention that it could have that maybe it deserved mm -hmm. um so yeah maybe that's just for another another time and another another tommy need a tales episode 
Yeah, yeah or a it. spin-off. That would be really cool. I mean, like, like a, a Tales episode would be amazing. Yeah. Like, just like getting that little like peek into their life and all of those those questions. Oh, right? yeah, I actually can do a Tales episode because B is the only yeah. one that matters. Oh, so out of the seats. So. <laughs> I think like, your entire crew needs a Tales episode. Yeah, that would yeah. be cool. Just like, just like all the time, just this little break the episode. This is for you. Oh. Hey, you're so nice. You come to the table, I'll sign it for you. Oh, that's so sweet. That's so cool. Yeah. Oh, got a couple. Hi. Okay. So I have a question for Eleanor. Um, one of my favorite character introductions was when we got to meet Princess. Um, and I love what her character brought out in the other characters, especially Yumiko. And I'm thinking about the scene with the minefield when you understand that she's been dragging you around all day. <laughs> And then she explains why she did it. Um, and there is a very specific look on your face where I can tell that Yumiko flips and she's like reluctantly changing her opinion of this person. And I'm wondering if you had any more like what's going through Yumiko's head at that moment. Yeah, I remember that day so clearly actually because it was so much of like life imitating art because we were meeting Paula for the first time. Like we'd had a, like we met a little bit like outside of work. We'd like had dinner and stuff like that, but this was the first day, you know, where she was like all dressed up as princess and it was so exciting to have this new character come in and it felt like a real departure for for me because, you know, all of a sudden I was leaving like the walls of Hilltop and Hilltop had been burnt and all this sort of stuff. And we like I was going out on this mission with um, Ezekiel and Eugene and that in itself felt weird because it was like these three characters that you never see together normally so all of it was new but I, I also loved that I felt like something different was happening and I felt like okay we're about to see Yumiko in a whole new light and Princess really brings that side out I think of, of, of her so that day it was so weird because we were like shooting in the city. We never shot in the city, you know. We always shot out bicycles. Oh, bicycles! And remember that girl that she'd like have all those, you know, the walkers and oh, stuff. Yeah. Like, you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was in like a, we were shooting at like the old shopping center. It just it all felt so weird and yeah. surreal. And um, and I think it was it's funny because I, it was just so easy to access Yumiko's panic at the lack of control of the situation. Like, what is this? I'm outside my comfort zone, things are happening, but ugh, like, I think Yumiko likes to, she's, she's pragmatic, you know, she likes to put out fires before they start. So for her, this was like triggering. She's like, oh my God. And then, you know, Princess is just like a ball of fire. She's just like a hot mess. So that I think is like the opposite to what Yumiko is normally this calm, kind of still sort of present. So, but then out of that always comes the best stuff, right? Because it's like the, the two opposites meet. So I think it's hard not to fall in love with Paola, like if you've met Paola. And so like, that's what I mean. It's like, it was in the, the script, sure, but it was so easy to access because like, even though I was being kind of like triggered, like, oh God, this is so weird, what are we doing? And then there's Princess and she's just such a ball of energy that even when we're trying to avoid stepping on mines, you sort of are having a great time as well. <laughs> like, you're like, this is actually the best day of my life. So it's very easy to fall in love with her. I know you didn't ask me a question, but do you, <laughs> do you want this? <laughs> <laughs> Was there one more question from this side before That's I go beautiful. to the other side? Oh my gosh, I love that. Well, Obviously, of course I want one. Can I have one? We all good? <laughs> Someone die. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is for you, Mako. I just want to know how you worked the last four or five episodes of the final season without choking Pamela Milton. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was tricky. Yeah, she was. She was a lot. Yeah, she was a lot. Um, because yeah, I mean, like I think if the episodes like in the script, I think if it had, the story hadn't unfolded the way that it did, like we kind of got delayed by our group coming in, by the walls being breached, by, you know, there was so much chaos going on. Thank God, because I think we was that close to one or other of us taking each other out, you know? Yeah. And also, but Layla's like, she's serious. Like she's like, cool actress like she's like a broadway chick like 
So it, it was a really fun shoot in those scenes. I don't know if she's ever done a con or if you've ever got, had a chance to meet her, but she's like the loveliest, warmest person. And then she just switches it on and she's just like a cold, hard, badass. And it was like, it was fun. Like I love doing all of those episodes for that reason because it really felt like you were like doing the scene, you know? She was, she was a really fun sparring partner. But yeah, it was a little intense there at the end, didn't it? <laughs> we have a question all the way over there. Hi, I actually have a question and comment for both of you. For Eleanor, um, like what was echoed earlier, um, the, the Luke death scene, the emotion that you guys brought to that scene, I actually was in the Orpheum for the finale and got to feel that like we were all in the audience just sobbing so much. You guys killed that scene. For both oh God, of you. Thank you. Um, for you, Dan, I am so excited to meet you because um, aside from The Walking Dead, Harry Potter is my big fandom. Yeah. And Jacob are characters that are so dear to me, and I love the way that you play them because they're characters that with difficult situations, they continue to have hope, kind of like literally what you said on the couch earlier. We were in our room talking about this right before we came down to this um, panel, like Luke's enthusiasm about music and about education, and I work in fine arts. So just seeing him have that, that love and, and showing that this is still important, this is still something we need to fight for because if we're only living to kill and fight other people, What's the whole point in going through this whole thing? So I love what you bring to that character. And then also for Jacob, I'm just so happy he finally got his happy ending with Queenie. <laughs> <laughs> do, do they have any news? Is there going to be another movie? Because I, I, I need to see more. <laughs> like Jacob having the one, like the enthusiasm. He gets the wand and just his, his whole childlike wonder about the world of magic because we know in the in the future Harry Potter movies, the ones that take place in the future, the muggles don't really get a chance to experience that world. So seeing it through Jacob's eyes, I, I smile every time you're on the screen. So I just wanted to tell you that as a Harry Potter fan, I love what you have brought. You've earned it. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, what, I mean, one thing I'll, I'll, I'll say is that, that the death scene, I mean, I had front row seats to all their performances that you can't have a good death scene without good mourners. And they were, I was like sitting there and just, just seeing the, the Niagara tears coming down. <laughs> and I was just like, you know the so part where I'm like, fishing for the harmonica. I wanted to just be like, just like pull out like an Emmy Award. And just, um, but it was, that was incredible. Uh, so, yeah, that was, that was a beautiful scene. I, I, I do YouTube dives every once in a while, but I just go through certain scenes that I love. Oh wow. Every time I watch a scene, I don't care how many times I watch it, I have the same reaction, I'm ugly crying, I'm sorry. It's like, the performance that you guys do so, so Can I just say that's like I'm so glad that, that that's been brought up because that was a that was a really special scene to shoot as well because we hadn't seen you for a while yeah, right. and um, you know people were asking a lot like about you know it's the finale like how you, there's so many things to tie up as we've already established but within that you still have to honor your characters and we started as a group and you're like how are we gonna tie this little bow up like we need to. When we read it, it was obviously devastating to know that we were going to shoot that. But I don't, I genuinely don't think that any of us had planned it to feel the way that it felt when we, sh when we shot it. And it was the first scene that we shot of the last episode. So it was quite, you know, it was quite, the emotions were high that day anyway, I guess, because it felt like, oh wow, we're shooting this, the first scene up of the final ever episode of The Walking Dead. And I remember we, we did it, and Greg Nicotero obviously was directing it, and he um, he kind of like prepped us really well he, in that way. He was like, "This is this is the end of your this is a real moment for your team. Like this, you're really like you started together, and this is how it's ending." It was so emotional. And when we when we 
finish it after the snot and the tears and however many times we did it and the blood ever I have a picture, oh my god I should show you the picture, I have a picture somewhere of me after the scene, uh, it's hilarious, I'm literally like covered, it just red all the way down from like Luke's blood. Um, but apparently he, he said that he called Kat and he turned to Angela Kang and he was like, now that's the, that's the finale of The Walking Dead. Like that's that's the kind of, that's what we need. It's like, this is day one, scene one, this is the energy that we have to match. And it felt real then, you know what I mean? Um, I'll never forget that day of shooting. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was very, it was intense. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I had, a, I, I had a lot, I was covered in blood. It was, it was, it was very, I was like Mr. Orange and Reservoir Dogs. It was just like everywhere. And, uh, and you were, you would, you'd be sobbing and, oh God. And they had you on this side because they were trying, because you were pregnant and they were trying to hide your, your and you, and you, and you'd come down and you'd, you'd put your head on my chest and you'd come back and you'd have just more and more blood on your face. And, uh, I have to find the photos. I have them. I have the pictures. Yeah. If you're coming to the podcast later, I have all those. I'm going to show some of those pictures. Yeah. I was like, this is just what it's going to be like at birth. <laughs> We're going to take one more and then we have to wrap up. So. Yeah. I have a question for Dan. Yes. What was your reaction when they told you you were going to die? That is a good question. Right? <laughs> like, did you get the call? Well, they tell you at the last possible freaking minute. <laughs> yeah. And because I'm, you know, I, I'm a guest star, I come in, in and out, I don't get the script. Right? So everybody knew before I did. You know? I didn't know. And, Are you uh, kidding me? Yeah, that was rough. And um, <laughs> so at first I was just like, but I thought there would be spin-offs. <laughs> and then I was like, holy shit, Dan. Luke, if you read the comic, he was supposed to die after one season. He was supposed to be one of the heads on the pike from Alpha. And so I was like, this is a gift, man. He got he got extra time to live and, and he got the jewels and and um so he was living on borrowed time anyway, for as, as far as I was concerned. And then that death, and I kind of talked to Greg about it. We really tweaked it, and, and we made it what it ended up being. And so, as it got closer to us shooting, I was like, wow, I, I just felt honored. Where'd the guy go? He's right here. <laughs> uh, I, I was just like, oh my god, like, I get to die in the finale, but who else gets to die on screen? Not a lot of people. It, became, it suddenly became like a real honor, you know, you know this is for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much. Come to the table yeah. outside. Guys, give a big round of applause. Yeah. Thank you so Please much. Please give it up for Kim.